So in today's video, I'm going to be summarizing the three lectures that were given by James Lindsay at the Sovereign Nations Mere Simulacrity Conference. So one of Lindsay's main arguments was that the West has actually three main historically defining forces, or what he calls the three religions of the West. So typically the story that is told about the formation of Western civilization is originating from Athens and Jerusalem. Right, so Dark Ages, Religious Repression, Enlightenment and Science, Industrial Revolution, um, Science Overtaking, Faith, uh, that sort of thing, right? But Lindsay wants us to rethink and reconceptualize the formation of Western civilization, and instead he wants to include three pervading forces instead of two. So these three pervading forces are central to the formation of Western civilization, as per Lindsay, and they're central also to how we got to where we are today. So the three religions that, or forces, that Lindsay is talking about are faith, reason, but a third one also, gnosis. So instead of just Athens and Jerusalem, it becomes Athens, Jerusalem, and Alexandria. Uh, additionally, uh, Lindsay's, another one of Lindsay's main arguments is the common th that the common thread of gnosis uh, as a historically defining force can be traced from the ancient religious cult of Hermeticism and Gnosticism, which scholars believe to have originated in Alexandria. Uh, and then from that onto Hegel, who system systematized it into his system of science, and then onto Marx, who had admitted to having been inspired by Hegel, um, but also stated that he had turned Hegel on his head. And that is to say, he took a materialist reading of Hegel and made it into his communist philosophy. And then finally on to the Frankfurt School and the modern woke movement. Uh, and if you're skeptical at all about the connection between Hegel and Hermeticism, um, because arguably that's the biggest time jump in that chronology, uh, there's a whole book about these connections by Glenn Alexander Magee called Hegel and the Hermetic Tradition. Uh, you can go read that. Uh, so yeah, just to summarize that so far, one of Lindsay's main arguments is that there's three historical forces, faith, reason, and gnosis, and this common thread of, of gnosis as a historically defining force can be traced from Hermetic Gnostic traditions, which were like mystery cults, uh, and then on to Hegel, Hegel to Marx, Marx to Frankfurt, and the modern woke, woke movement. So, uh, I will quickly define gnosis as a historically defining force, uh, what, what Lin Lindsay means when he says gnosis. So, he's talking about the divine revealed knowledge that you are indistinguishable from the supreme, i.e. that you are God, and so that man's spiritual quest for gnosis becomes the realization or the remembrance that he is in fact God. So, um, we're just going to go through a few more defining characteristics of the Hermetic faith or religion. So we'll just read through these. So, and this is from the uh, Hegel and the Hermetic Tradition book by Magee. So the first thing that he summarizes from this is, from the Hermetic faith, is that God requires creation in order to be God. Number two, God is in some sense completed or has a need fulfilled through man's contemplation of him. Third, Illumination involves capturing the whole of reality in a complete encyclopedic speech. Number four, man can perfect himself through gnosis. Right, We just talked about that. He becomes empowered through the profession of the complete speech. Number five, man can know the aspects or moments of God. Number six, an initial stage of purification in which the initiate is purged of false intellectual standpoints is required before the reception of true doctrine. And number seven, the universe is an internally related whole pervaded by cosmic energies. And then... Of course, these are sort of the stripped-down, stripped, stripped down bare bones ideas, and there's a whole cosmology uh, that's kind of weird that surrounds Hermeticism as well. Um, and just in support of Hermeticism being a, a Gnostic-adjacent faith, uh, here's a quote from the Poimandres, where it says, This is what you must know, that in you which sees and hears is the word of the Lord, but your mind is God the Father, so your mind is God. Uh, they are not divided from one another, and their uni union is life. And then again, in the same book, Poimandres, it says, this is the final good for those who have received knowledge to be made God, right? So pretty straightforward there. Uh, and if you watched my last video, we talked about this heresy, right? Uh, which is the oldest line in the book, Genesis story of Adam and Eve, um, Eve being tempted by the serpent. Uh, Genesis states, uh, the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day ye shall eat thereof, and your eyes will, shall be opened, and ye shall be as, as gods, knowing good and evil. So the idea of gnosis um, and remembering that you are God and be, that being like a salvatory, the thing that causes your salvation is directly contrary to Christian religion. So 
Lindsay also points out that when faith and reason work together, they box out Gnosis, right? Because Gnosis is like the, the unhealthy, the ugly duckling of the three. So faith grounds reason, keeps it humble. Reason keeps faith sane. But when they wor aren't working well together, Gnosticism or Gnosis can freely enter. And this is why it is important to have a strong, healthy religious practice like Christianity, which when done properly will block out Gnosis. <clears throat> so once people are initiated and undergo this Gnostic realization in this hermetic or Gnostic adjacent, style belief, then they begin to use this self-proclaimed power to create lies or fake realities in order to advance their personal agendas, um, which they feel justified in doing because they have seen the mind of God, they call nous, Greek for mind, and therefore they know better than you. So in the Poimandras, the Hermetic book, uh, what is the first thing that the initiate, which I think is Hermes, what is the first thing he does when he sees the mind of God? He goes and shares it with other people, right? Uh, Poimandras says, why do you still delay? Having learned all this, should you not become guide to the worthy, so that through you, the human race might be, might be saved by God? And that's a little bit suspicious, right? Um, through you, the human race might be saved by God. That sounds like he's elevating himself to the status of Christ. Uh, so a little bit suspicious. Let me check if I have that quote there. But yeah, it's right here. There it is. You can see it, make it a bit bigger. Whoa. Um, yeah, so again, pretty antithetical to Christian faith. Um, and so, in order for these religions to have any power and to, per, to pervade through society, they need to first displace the truth, which is what Lindsay characterizes in his first video as negation of the real. And it is only after that they're able to discredit reality that they will have the ability to create space for their false ideologies or hyper realities. Uh, and so, in order, notice that this type of sorcery happens all the time in our society, apart, apart from the woke movement, which we'll get into the woke movement in a, in a bit. But this idea of displacing real-life reality in order to make room for hyper-reality happens all the time in advertising, marketing, uh, and as well as on social media. We talked about that in another video. So hyper-realities and ideologies become convincing when they absorb pieces or truths of the first reality, right? That's the idea of like using nine truths to sell you one lie. Uh, in the words of another scholar, Eric Vogelin, who um, Lindsay quotes in his talks as well, uh, Vogelin says the sorcerers work as replacing the first reality of experience by the second reality of imaginative construction and endowing the imaginary reality or hyper reality with the appearance of truth by letting it absorb pieces of the first reality. Yeah, the key there being let it absorb pieces of the first reality. So the hyper reality has some things that are true, but it uses that to sneak the lie in. So I have an example here from the woke movement, right? The uh, racism and capitalism have called, caused some problems in the past, right? This is certainly true. However, the issue is that the ideology treats this one problem as if it were the source of all problems, right? It's mistaking the part for the whole. And then they also tell the new initiate that this is part of the, this is the way that the world really works, which gives them a sense of belonging and identity because they're the ones that are in the know of like the secret knowledge. Um, and for example, this is from uh, another paper by uh, Campbell, I believe. We'll, we'll get to it. Uh, he says, the newly minted Marxist can see that class struggle is really what drives human affairs, and the imbiber of critical race theory today is enlightened to the fact that white supremacy is the key to understanding all things in America. Um, so this incites people into adopting the hyper-reality, right? Because, you know, they're right. Racism and capitalism have caused problems in the past, but then they, they blow it out of proportion and make it seem like that's the, the one way of seeing things. And so you get these, these permanent, like, um, bias. That's the way you have to understand everything. It's like a closed loop, right? Uh, and so once these people are initiated into adopting the hyper-real construction, they, they learn to see the world through this lens only. Um, and they also, alongside of that, learn the language that comes around alongside the hyper-real construction. So... Uh, This, this, this misuse of language in order to um, frame the world uh, within these ideologies or hyper-realities can also be called word magic. Um, and this is the, the, rea this is the language that, uh, or the term that is used by Gene Callahan, not Campbell, sorry, Gene Callahan, in his, uh, his article that is called Woke is the New Sorcery. So, <clears throat> where am I here? Yeah, so other people signal that they are also enlightened or part of the same hyper-real construction or same ideology or same cult by the way that they misuse language. 
So once you're able to master the way that they you misuse language in specialized ways to understand things or relate to the world, then you are initiated into the cult, even if you don't consciously realize it. So think about woke language, right? If you've spent any time around a person who considers themselves to be woke or part of that sort of neoliberal movement, then you'll notice that they frequently will police your language in order to make it seem more politically correct or inclusive or equitable. Um, and this article by Gene Callahan explains several instances of this. Right, so I think I got these screenshotted here. Yeah, so. Yeah, so the attempt to address social ills by word magic is also apparent in the shifting terms by which it is considered acceptable to refer to people of historical sub Saharan African descent. So, Negro was once fine, was then replaced by colored, as in the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. Then, colored was rejected and black became correct. Then black was out, and African American was de rigueur. Uh, word magic is also present in gender discussions. So, uh, the very shift from talking about a person's sex to talking about their gender was itself an instance of word magic. The hopes that renaming the biological reality of sexual dimorphism uh, as if it were an arbitrary category like gender in a language might transform biological reality into social convention. So, the idea that the that these sor sorcerers essentially or hermetics, hermetics or woke people have is that even if they don't realize it is that changing the language first will lead to changes in reality later but of course this is not true um, uh, according to woke gender theory people are assigned a gender at birth assigned uh, they really are whatever gender they choose to adopt and notice the belief in word magic implicit in this position it doesn't matter if you have a male sex organ and there's natural testosterone coursing through your body just so long as others refer to you as she, you really are a woman. And further, if they refer to you as Z or they or Flaubert gastemesis, then you really are in some imaginary alternative sex. So, and I've got one more here that uh, is in the Callahan article. So, he says, uh, another recent instance of word magic is the repeated declaration no matter how much violence is really involved, that BLM and Antifa activities are always peaceful protests. In this instance of word magic, arson, vandalism, and assaults merely amount to, in the language of one Associated Press report, a, a peaceful demonstration intensified. Uh, no matter how much violence is occurring, so long as we ca call what is happening peaceful protests, they will magically be peaceful. So, uh, now I want to shift gears a little bit and talk about um, what is the uh, the hyper-reality that the woke movement wants to create. What is like the end goal of woke? And we'll see how this ties back into uh, hermetic thought. So in hermeticism, the goal of the, the faith or salvation is complete obliteration of the self in order to re-merge with God. Um, so, and that's what they call the all or the supreme. Uh, and the basic cosmology is that God at the beginning of time was incomplete in his knowledge as uh, he was perfectly one, united, and he did not know about the possible distinctions that could occur. So he created the world in creation so that this knowledge of distinction could be obtained. But now that reality has been created, the goal is to return back to the initial unified state so that God can be unified and have the knowledge of distinction. Um, so, in order to do this, uh, people who are initiated into the Hermetic faith uh, want to destroy the distinctions and categorizations that we have in our minds. Uh, in order to further themselves toward oneness uh, and their idea of God, which is perfectly united or perfectly one. So nous, which is the Greek for mind, is primary, and reality is secondary, which is an inversion, right? So typically we think of, you know, reality exists, then we have ideas about reality, uh, but her hermetics think of it the opposite way. So <clears throat> the things in the mind or the imagination or the, or the nous are more real, and the reality is in the, in the way of this imagination. And the technique used to erase distinctions is called the dialectic. Um, that's not what the Hermetics call it, but that's what um, that's what Hegel called it and Marx called it. And it is done by blending opposites into one thing so that they're no longer opposites. And metaphysically, the reason that these sorcerers feel comfortable erasing these intuitive distinctions um, is due to the way that they view truth. So pre-modern Hermetics uh, saw truth as both a subject to change, I, I, it's truth is subjective. And then they also saw it B as unified, so that this, because God is truth, right? So they think that um, truth is unified or one. 
though the distinctions and opposites that exist in the world are merely illusions. Uh, and these beliefs are evident from the Corpus Hermeticum and the Asclepius, which are two of the main Hermetic texts. So I have some extracts here. This one is from uh, Book 9 of the Corpus Hermeticum, verse 10. It says, To understand is to believe, and to not believe is, to not, is not to understand. Reason discourse does not get to the truth, but mind is powerful, and when it has been guided by reason up to a point, it has the, the means to get as far as the truth. Basically, it's just saying that truth is beyond reason, which makes no sense, right? Um, and then a second extract here from Asclepius, uh, verse 32, it says, But the quality of consciousness in the supreme God and the understanding of that quality is truth alone. Not a shadow, not even the faintest trace of this truth can be discerned in the world. For there is falsehood wherever one discerns anything by measuring time, and where there is denature, one finds error. So basically, uh, it's saying that nothing in the world that we can see or experience points towards truth, again supporting the idea that truth is not reasonable. And this directly is contrary to the Christian notion that God and his truth are partially revealed to us in his creation. Um, and then secondly, in here at the end it says, um, where there is geniture, one finds error. Geniture is like an older, fancier word. It just means birth or creation. And in this context, creation is connected with the idea of division, right? So if you remember back to the cosmology that I told you about, um, apparently in the Hermetic faith, God like um, created a creation in order to gain knowledge about the distinctions that could occur. And so creation is connected with the idea of division since when the Hermetic God creates, he does so in order to reveal distinctions. Uh, basically, this is saying that the truth is unified and that any divisions are illusory, illusory false, and cause confusion or bad. Uh, so in summary, Hermetics think that truth is to be found in mind or nous and is not something that exists independently or objectively. So, um, when it comes to the woke movement, um, these people think they have seen the mind of God, they think they've seen like, the truth, um, which doesn't exist in the world, but they've got this imagination of it, and they try to make that imagination real by subverting reality and building this hyper-real second reality, the hyper-real construction. Um, so, and since Hegel got his philosophies from Hermeticism, again, going back to Al Glenn Alexander Magee's book, uh, Hegel and the Hermetic tradition. Um, we can get to the weeds a little bit here, but the general idea is that Hegel doesn't believe in objective truth, as you and I would have it. Uh, just like the Hermetics, he doesn't believe in objective truth. Instead, Hegel thinks about the truth as eternally in the process of becoming itself, which he calls actualization. And that humans can shape this process of actualization through what he calls the dialectic. Uh, and so, Hegel thinks that this is how ideas change throughout history, or morph through the dialectic. And we talked about it before. It's about basically um, the unification of opposites or kind of showing how oppo opposing forces are really two sides of the same point and that they resolve themselves, uh, which Hegel called the dialectical unity of opposites. And this connects with the hermetic idea of opposites and divisions being false truth, right? So this also contradicts Christian belief since the entire Bible can be seen as a book of divisions. Man, woman, sin, righteousness, flesh, spirit, life, death. And it's these divisions that allow the Christian to make good decisions and discern right from wrong. But it, it's not so in the Hermetic tradition, right? Truth is supposedly one, so any distinctions are false, uh, including right and wrong. And this uh, seems like Hegel would agree, right? So, notice that this goal of achieving oneness and unity by destroying distinctions is absolutely part and parcel of the woke movement, right? So, for example, male and female aren't the only two genders. In fact, there are infinite genders. You can identify as whatever you want. Gender is a spectrum. Uh, again, race and, ethnicity, race and ethnicity aren't meaningful categories. Race is socially constructed. Or again, fit, fit and fat people are really the same. They're equally healthy. And if you don't agree, you're a body-shaming bigot. Um, so yeah. Uh, here's another example from Marx. Uh, upper and lower economic classes, which he called bourgeois and proletariat, shouldn't exist because we're really all part of one species being. And we should all exist in the same economic class under communism, right? Everyone's the same. Even though Marx was, Marx was a diehard materialist in his view of the world, he really was very religious in the Gnostic sense. He saw private property as the defining characteristic of otherness between people. And if he could just abolish private property, everything would be made awesome and unified. In other words, destroy the self, destroy the individual in order to return to the all. You see the parallels between that and Hermeticism? So basically, the woke agenda wants to negate the real and erase distinctions in order to accelerate this project towards oneness or return to God. And they also want to get more power and influence so they can force this hyper-reality 
with its lack of distinctions onto as many people as possible. Okay, that's the connection. And so one question you might ask yourself is, why do governments and large corporations always support the modern woke movement? Um, and it's because of this, right? They want to force this hyper-reality onto as many people as possible. Um, so if, if you want to sort of avoid the conspiracy theories uh, as to why um, other elites and like uh, large corporations want to um, impose this totalitarian system, this guy's as democracy on people, it's because they want to maintain power and make lots of money, right? But if you aren't as afraid of these so-called conspiracies, then you could open the door from higher theological motives for this control, right? Like the ones we were talking about before of Hermeticism and this project towards oneness. Um, and so, uh, like I said previously, the way that they impose this totalitarian system is by subverting the obvious reality that individuals have rights to a healthy, holistic life and to the rights, to the fruits of their labor, fruits of their labor, and the rights to make their own unbiased decisions about how to live and what to believe and what media to consume, how to spend your time, how to spend your attention. Um, obviously, a happy, strong, free-thinking, independent population of people cannot be easily controlled or manipulated or exploited. These positive traits are not desirable for these large corporations and governments, so they attempt to subvert primary reality in order to control people. And the way they do that is the ancient hermetic method of sorcery or alchemy, which is, in modern terms, the dialectic. Uh, and so, or the, dis the dissolution of opposites. Uh, but the question can then be posed. What does the woke movement do in order to get you to accept this new hyper-reality hyper where there are no distinctions, right? Like, you're not just going to accept the dialectic right away because um, your senses tell you otherwise. Your senses tell you that there are divisions, divisions in the world. And so, uh, this is the way they do it. They point out, or sorry, they, they point out all the issues with the traditional thing, and traditional things are full of divisions and distinctions. So they point out the issues with the traditional thing, then suggest their own method or ideology, which has no divisions or has less divisions, and which conveniently has no issues with it because it's never been implemented before. And they use this as evidence that it's actually better than, than the traditional method. So as an example, think about communism in the days of Karl Marx, right? The heydays of communism. It was seen as this great utopian alternative to capitalism. And capitalism was awful because all these things, all these past reasons, um, exploitation and all that. But communism would solve it because it never killed or exploited anybody. But of course, communism had never been tried. And every time we try it, everyone dies. <laughs> but nowadays, in retrospect, we can see how that turned out, right? And it's the exact same thing that's happening with the LGBT agenda or critical race theory or the replacement of religions with institutionalized science or the state, um, sexual liberation movement, crushing the patriarchy, all these other liberal ideas, right? They want, they want to make everything seem as though it's a social construction, and that the divisions inherent in these ways of thinking are illusory and false, right? So race, rights, family, religion, faith, the accelerationist liberals want us to believe that all these things are social constructions. They're not real. And that by, and that by believing in them, that believing in these traditional systems, we are actually perpetuating the system that caused all these problems like oppression and death, um, when in reality, their methods are worse and they just haven't been tried properly haven't been taken to their logical conclusion, right? Uh, so, and the reason that the woke people and the corporations are able to exert this power over people is because they claim to know better, right? They have noose, they have mind, and you don't. Um, like, for example, this is like the example Lindsay gives in his talk. Why do woke people push weird gender theory in schools? Because they claim that they're not an expert. Where is your gender studies degree? They know better, they know the theories, you don't. Or again, why do they dictate your diet to you? Why did they say you should stop eating meat? You should eat bug protein. You should go vegan um, because you're not an expert. Where's your nutrition degree? Where's your study in environmentalism? They know better. You don't. Um, so we covered a lot of ground. I talked really fast. But in summary, I've showed how the modern woke movement and its motivations and philosophies can be traced through Hegel back to ancient religions such as Gnosticism and Hermeticism. And it's ultimately the hermetic concept of ascending through the dimensions until we're able to return to oneness with God. That's the motivating the woke movement and its desire to destroy the distinctions identified by traditional institutions like the church. So now we can understand woke ideology for what it is, a weird religious cult. And again, I encourage you to go watch the conference videos from Lindsay, who undoubtedly explains these concepts much better than I am. And they're like three hours or two hours each. So um, he actually goes into the examples and like does a better job explaining it. 
Um, also, I didn't get too much into Marx here or the Frankfurt School and how that kind of translated from Hegel into the woke movement. Um, maybe I'll make a video of that, about that in the future. But um, I think I might take a break for a while. Got some things coming up. So thanks for listening. Uh, watch that one back again. And I'll see you next time.